even though the grounds aren't exactly flooded with people and it should be impossible to miss Misha's pink hair even if they, if they were, I have a lot of difficulty finding them. Finally I ran into them at the front gate, which was the first place I'd looked. Whoa! Hello. She attempts to punctuate her normal greeting with a grand little sweep at the end. <laughs> hey Chan, how do you how are you? It's strange seeing them in your cutter, though I've been seeing your cutter in general all night. Well, you may have, but no, that nobody's appeared on screen, no. She kind of reminds me, dressed like this, reminds me of Yukiko from Persona 4. As for you, um, remind me of someone, I just can't think. Maybe not, actually. <laughs> Whatever. She's it is simple and tasteful, which seems obvious for her in respect for all her grand flourishes and over-the-top behavior. I think she would rather die than dress the part. What draws my eye is the hairpin she is wearing, a pearl flower that gleams softly in the moonlight. Looks pretty on her, but in a way it also feels out of place, as if it's too elaborate for a high school girl, or maybe just for someone as secretly childish as to do. Mr. Zakata is about what I expected, so it actually fits a little too well. Paired with her bubblegum pink hair, she looks cute, but, uh, an uh, it's, it's look nice. Thanks, he chan <laughs> She reminds, she reminds me of Yuko, but she also reminds me of someone else, but I can't think who it is. Actually, maybe the student council president from Dark Upper 2. That's like, that's... They're both identical, really. Well, not really. Not at all. But they both wear glasses and they're the student council and they're serious. That's what they have in common. Hey, Chan, you're a little late. We were waiting here for a, a while for you. Didn't forget the time or the place. Oh, well, let's get going, Hee Chan. We should drop this live discussion and say me what could potentially be a pretty embarrassing thing to own up to. Specifically that I hadn't been looking for them for at least an hour. Seeing Shizune and Misha looking so cheerful, it's hard not to want to fall into the atmosphere and enjoy a nice night out. What the bull is me? Wait, what? You know, I just realized. We didn't get this scene in any of the other routes, do we? Wait, what the hell's up with that? Why didn't we get to see the other characters dress up for this festival thing? Uh, Tanabato or whatever. I'm, I would say I'm gonna Google that once I like, finish recording, but I know I'll probably forget. Maybe when I hear it while editing, maybe, I don't know. What bothers me is that I'm having some trouble reading Shizune's signing tonight. Actually, was... There was a festival in the uh, Gogo Nippon 2015 whatever edition that I LP'd. I think before I LP'd this, wasn't it? And they had a festival in that, but I'm not sure if it's the same festival or if it was a different one. I just can't remember the name. But anyways, what bothers me is that I'm having some trouble reading Shizune Sign tonight. I haven't been to Sign Language class in almost a week, so I'm not surprised. I guess I haven't lost focus for a while, I'm slipping. Certainly wouldn't be the first time. Uh, hold on, where are we going? In the town? Yes. That doesn't make any sense. We haven't even checked out what's on the grounds. Unless you two decided to have fun while I was looking. We're going to come back. We'll be working our way up. Haha, <laughs> out of the way, Hee-chan. We have to walk into town and then back up if we want to see everything. So, this way after we're done, we'll be right by our dorms when we're tired. It works out perfectly. This is admittedly logical. Shizune doesn't give me much time to argue anyway. Grab me by the arm and lightly trying to pull me along. <laughs> Those eyes! The streets illuminated only by the light of the moon and low lanterns tinted with tissue paper but yet ease. Now that we're in town, Shizune moves a bit more slowly in order to see the sights. So I decide to walk more briskly in order to mess with her, but she quickly readjusts her own speed to match, letting out a soundless laugh before quickly signing Felicia with her off hand. What do you want to do first, he chan Wait. Yeah. 
is can't be can't be it looks like her though and honestly I wouldn't be surprised uh, maybe I don't know kinda looks like CC from code yes I think that was her name did she even yeah she probably I haven't seen it in ages maybe maybe this is like referencing her right here just like hey let's draw her in the background see how many people notice I know She's not dressed like her, but she's got the same hair. Hair color, the same looking hair. And you know what? Remember the Gogo Nippon uh, LP? I remember when they were like... I forget where they actually were. It was the story about the dog though. And in the background, I didn't notice it at the time, but I've since noticed it. I haven't even seen the anime, but it looks like that one guy I don't even remember his name from Neon. Uh, I can't even pronounce the title. But you, you know what I mean. It totally was a guy there that looked like the guy from it. The guy, like the only I only know him as the guy that has his like, you know, always whenever I see a picture of him, he has like his hands together, like Mr. Burns and all serious looking. His glasses. It looked like him. So, it does happen, you know, maybe it's intentional, maybe it's not, but it certainly is something. Anyways, uh, uh, how about some games, if there are any? And what you didn't like, Game Teacher? I don't mind. For the second time today, I feel her slim fingers wrapping around mine. Feels like all this time I've been pulled along by Shizuni's will. Occasionally it's quite tiring, but I think that for the most part, I wouldn't say I hate it. It's just a quality of some people to drag others into their lives like a storm. That would fit Shizune sometimes, I think. Although I didn't want to tell Misha earlier today, I do like her. He chan you're again to, uh, going to win doll for me too this time, right? You're still thinking about that? Okay, I will. He may succeed. The time passes by faster than I thought it could as we run around trying to do as many frivolous things as possible. Snow cones! Hee chan, do you want one? Misha runs towards the stand, not even waiting to hear my answer. This reminds me of freaking Higurashi, now that I think about it. Like, the festival in Higurashi takes place in the night, and they have a similar atmosphere. It wasn't the same festival, but, you know, it has a similar feel to it, you know, like all these stalls and all that. But this is a totally different visual novel. Imagine if it took a Higurashi turn, you'd be like, holy shit, what the fuck? It starts off all cheerful and like all nice and all, and then it goes freaking straight down. They look delicious, I want one too. We'll play rock, paper, scissors and see who will pay for them all. Ah, uh, the age old game. Or we could each pay for our own. Hey Chan, what flavor do you want? You know, actually, I think the oldest form of rock, paper, scissors would be rock, rock, and rock. Because they wouldn't have paper, rock, scissors, would they? Well, the game didn't exist back then, I'd imagine. Can you imagine if it did? It's just like, we haven't even, like, you know, discovered and started using paper. We haven't even made the scissors, but we make the movement with our hands anyway. Picture that, a bunch of people in caves thousands of years ago playing rock, paper, scissors before it was even a thing. It's like, yeah, we're total hipsters here. We were doing it before it was cool. Before we even knew what the hell we were doing. The blue one. Blue is not a flavor. I knew that. Ordering something based on color is childish. Zene, you never fail to amaze. I mean, really. To call anyone childish, I mean, come on, you've got a ridiculous competitive nature that's quite childish in itself. And screw you anyway, I choose on flavors and color sometimes. It's just like, sure, maybe it's like when you get ice cream, for example. It's not one again, actually, I mean, just like, oh, I'll get with, well, go with a blue one or the green one or whatever. I know the green one's mint, and the blue one, would that be raspberry or something like that? But I, I just like, you know, associated with the color more than, you know, what it actually is. Does that make me childish? Maybe. Who gives a fuck? 
Yo, childish, what are you wh what are you getting? You getting strawberry? Ha! That's such a childish flavor. Only children eat strawberry. You should get plain, the most mature flavor of all. I want to know where her personality comes from. I wonder if I would think that way if she didn't have hadn't been the first student I ended up having a conversation with on my first day here. Yeah, that is a thing, isn't it? She, she literally was. I mean, he didn't communicate with her properly because he didn't have a clue. But apparently, uh, outside of uh, staff, he was the first one to uh, talk to me. Except he didn't know what she was saying. But then Misha came in, so she was technically, if you look at it that way, the first one to talk to me. It's entirely possible that I have missed the parts of her that kept drawing me in. But I didn't know that she couldn't hear me, and that she was so competitive and so focused to get me to join student council and so it turned into a playful and sharp. Without these constant new ventures to keep my interest in her, would I have grown to like her so much? It's likely that I am overthinking it. Aren't you gonna make a wish? Teachan never makes wishes, Teachan. Oh really? And not even on New Year's? Why's that? Let me guess. Well, Shizuri turns her fingers and smiles, but one answer. It's a secret. So it's. I was expecting her to make another comment like that. Because it's childish. Wishes. Just hard work and dedication. Screw your wishes. But nope. That's not how she thinks about it. I know. Hee-chan, do you want me to tell you? Uh, want me to tell you? I don't think I've seen that face before. She's looked a little flustered. Yes. Is it any alternates between us? I don't think I've seen that face either. Then again, since she's we been wearing the yukata, her uh, expression has slightly changed because of her pose. Is it any alternates between as many forceful iterations of no as you can think of? No, fucking no, hell no, fuck off, no way, no, 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 shit, head. I wonder how that would look in sign. <laughs> I'll tell you later, okay? Actually, I feel tired. I think I'm going to go to bed early. Really? It doesn't feel like it's been that long. Time flies when you're having fun. But it has, he chan Maybe I could visit Yuko first, then go back. Or, I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter. Have fun without me, okay? We're gonna go back to the school soon anyway, Misha. Is... Well, we saw we saw that freaking clip, didn't we? The animated bit. Saw Misha in the background. It's clear now. I've only just realized it. She's doing this deliberately, isn't she? She's like, hey, you, you two get together. Yes, but obviously... She ends up probably developing feelings for Sal as well, and it's going to be a love triangle, and I have no idea what to expect other than it's probably going to be a love triangle of some sort. And it'll hit you in the feels, and then it'll get resolved. But first, we go for a bad ending first. Maybe a neutral ending, I don't know if it... I think she only has a bad ending. She has a bad ending and her normal good ending, essentially. So we go for the bad ending first, then wherever the good ending. But that's a ways away, I imagine. Because I haven't actually played this rat, as I've said a number of times already, but anyway. Fisher doesn't want to hear it, so it leaves anyway. Then I start to wonder why, just as soon as I do. But what I like, keep it in my head. She signs it, seeming to want to discuss the possible reasons. After we're both done seeing all there is to see, I check the time and find that it is pretty late. My energy is starting to wear off, and it's a miracle that I managed to have even this much too. Even Shizune is starting to look a bit tired, so we make our way back to the grounds. Shizune seems disappointed when she sees the school building lit up and teeming with students. Something wrong? Oh? I wanted to go up to the roof, but now there are too many people. I'm tired, so it might be for the best. A dejected, disappointed face? That's new. There are probably couples on the roof since it's that kind of holiday. Maybe that's also why Misha left early. Then again, I wouldn't know. Is that how it really is? I've never really been to many festivals before coming here. Any festivals? Yo, festival-wise, I've never been to much either. I have at least been to one or two, I don't know. But generally, I can't really think of really... I have no idea. <laughs> 
And this Bonav, what you said you wanted to see what the school was doing last, like saving the best for last. Now you're telling me you don't want to, not even a little. Uh, I thought you would have more energy. I don't feel tired. This seems to spark her competitive spirit, and she's in and immediately picks up. Although it's then that I realized I didn't have anyone in mind to take her, and I don't feel like going to the main building myself. The moon in the sky, unfortunately, the area behind the school is both deserted and impressive looking today. Impressive looking? It's all grey! I'd never appreciate how sprawling and well kept it was until seeing it at night. It almost seems to go on forever in the moonlight. It's very pretty, even though it's just a field. I'd thought earlier that she was too immature to uh, pull off the old-fashioned clothes she is wearing tonight, but right now she is quite beautiful in them. My ears! What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, elegant, yeah, that's the word. I remember Ember in that one CG where uh, uh, Anzu, yeah, that was her name, and Dark Upper 2 is looking to the side and he's like, My God, look at that elegant expression! And now we're back to that. Elegant, motherfucker, do you have it? It makes me think back to that day, the other festival that I went to with her. She had looked the same way then. I want to tell her that I like her, decisively in one way, but even thinking about it is just so awkward. And the more I like her, the more awkward and afraid I am of telling her how I feel. Isn't that the usual dilemma, even now when I could do so if I wanted without having to go through another person? Not to mention, what if what happened last time happens again? If it does, I might not get off so easily with a month long hospital stay. I don't want to even think about it. I try to shove the thoughts out of my mind any way possible. I try to dismiss them as unlikely fears. Still, the first time I had seen all of my pills, I'd imagined them cascading before me, enough of them to choke me. I still think about it from time to time. I can't say that it's not a legitimate concern. Times like these are nice enough that I can forget them. Elegance! My favorite thing about this school is that it's on top of a mountain. Is it because it's that much closer to the sky? Yes. I like it too, but well because of the fresh air. It's so competitive. Too competitive. If I whale a bit, you would... Uh, if I whale a bit, you would... What, what, if, if, no. if a whale bit you, you would bite it back. I was freaking saying that sentence completely wrong. That makes her laugh when she winks. Would that be so bad? Her smile is contagious. Ah, uh, yes. It's true, I'm terrible, a little. But if I can make people happy, I'm not entirely good. Uh, terrible, am I? It's okay, I have many examples in my defense. Maybe even this memory is a kind of game to her. That's right. This is a romantic moment. I don't know if such a chance might come again, and I feel compelled to say something awkward and stupid. If I think about it too much, I doubt my hands will listen to me. Do you want to be my girlfriend? Ooh, right to the point. Balls, man. I, I wonder. Well, like I said, you know, with like sign language, it takes more time to think for what to say. So I imagine it would actually be harder to do that, I suppose. Maybe, I don't know. I hope that I signed it properly. <laughs> no, he signed as, can I have sex with... Oh shit, wrong one, wrong one! He's like, where did you learn to sign that? I feel nervous, as if I want to break into a run, yet I'm rooted to the spot. I couldn't hear a thing just minutes ago, now I'm picking up every little ambient noise. I really am nervous, and I wonder if it shows. Probably. Before I was past like seconds, now the seconds pass like eons. There now she is, Shizune's hands moving unsteadily before her, fumbling over each other, stopping halfway for each gesture. It's like she said, sign language gives you an opportunity to think your words through, and she is trying very hard to do that right now. The situation that she doesn't know how to respond to, it must be unthinkable. As stoic as Shizune tries to be, she can't hide her reddening cheeks, and she's very cute and feminine like this. But it puts me at ease to know she is as nervous as I am. The fort, fort is yet another way in which I found myself competing with her. Okay. Whoa, that's a simple reply, but as soon as I think that, Shizune takes a step forward and embraces me. 
An unsure and careful embrace, as if I were made of eggshell, and as if she doesn't know how to hug someone. Although, to be honest, it's not a subject I'm familiar with either. Her yukata is cool and silky under my fingers, but I can see also feel Shizune's warmth. In the end, she fought this the best possible gesture the show has to build. Beautiful! Simple but beautiful! Maybe I underestimated this round. It's actually pretty decent so far. What the hell? Act 3! Slate of hands. That adorable face. Well, both faces are adorable there. He's like, ah. Remember in Dark Harbor 2 where some of the relationships, how they start, and they just be like, okay, that was sudden. I mean, what the fuck, man? I mean, sure, they've interacted and all, but not, not enough for that to really make sense or some shit. But with that, we've actually seen them spend enough time, so, you know, for it being quite a straightforward kind of asking her out there, it felt natural compared to the, some of the ones in Dark Harbor 2. Remember with Anzu, he's just like, what? What? Why? How? I mean, sh why? But in this, it feels more believable, like, with all the routes so far. And li with Lily's route being the only one left. Actually, yeah, I think all of them. Like, Rin's was kind of awkward, but that's like her character, isn't it? So it's kind of understandable. That one flowed naturally, in my opinion, as well. It's been so long since Emmy's one, but I think that one flowed somewhat naturally ish or something. I don't know. Her route kind of remind, like, thinking of it, it felt like how, like, inclined Tomoya and Tomoyo got together. They were more like the kind of, you know, close couple kisses and all that, rather than, you know, just like being a couple but not really being intimate like that often. While Emmy and Sao were like that quite a bit, so it reminds me of that. And, uh, Hanako's? Well, Hanako, 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 Hanako. It felt sudden, but at the same time natural, because he was like, they'd spent enough time together to kind of like for that develop a bit. And then there was. Wait. That's all the ones we've gone through so far, isn't it? Kenji doesn't count. You didn't get in a relationship with him. But you get the idea. The relationships, it feels more natural than, like, in Dark Up 2 and even Shuffle as well, for that matter. For the most part. Kind of relationships kind of feel a bit forced at times and just too quick. Well, actually, the trouble with Shuffle was. Once you actually get the character route, it just seems to, like, flow by then. It's like, okay, the route has started. All right, time's up. Credits. You're like, what? The build-up to it was longer than anything else. Dark Upper 2 was, like, you know, more balanced. But some of the characters... Why am I suddenly reviewing them here, in a way? It's like, yeah, I'm reviewing Shuffle and Dark Upper 2, even though I LP them ages ago. I'm just comparing the relationships... Because really, in this one, it feels more natural. It flows more naturally, the relationships. But anyway, I'm just going on and on here. Following days pass uneventfully and with surprising quickness, I find renewed motivation to learn sign language. Well, obviously now, it seems that I have a knack for learning sign, so it would be a waste to not do it. And failing behind, falling behind would be even more unacceptable. Some of the break is coming up, even though I figured that student council work would see a drop off. Proportional to how lethargic my classes are becoming. It doesn't happen that way. Every day I get swamped under increasingly meaningless work. Despite how much I want to, I don't have even a free second to talk to Shizune nowadays. It's always the bloody case as well, isn't it? The relationship starts and then suddenly they start to grow a bit distant. And then they come back. Okay, maybe that might be... I don't know. Well, it's... It's the start of relationships. Start of relationships can, you know, be like that, I guess. Where they're kind of like off to a roughish start. Where it's just like they become unsure about the relationship. And then eventually they come to terms with it. And then they're like, you know what? Yeah, this is working. Rather than, this isn't working out. That's when you get to the bad end. It's like, no, this isn't working out anymore. Anyways, despite how much I want to, I don't have even for any nowadays. 
Every time I look at her, her face is buried in some book of records or some stack of papers that need to be checked over in triplicates. Today I woke up early to come to school before everyone else, hoping to catch Suzune. She has a habit of coming in first thing in the morning, to be more punctual than all of the other students. Unfortunately, I think I'm earlier than her. Here in the student council room, door click close to my right tells me that isn't the case. I guess I got here just behind her. Enter the room and tap Shizune on the shoulder to get her attention. Maybe she expects a conversation, which is why she puts down a carton of orange juice in her hand. Well, isn't that what you wanted? Good morning. Uh, where's your better half? We are separated, separate individuals. Thinking about it, they must get that quite a bit. I can think of no other way to explain how ready she was with that answer. You're here early. That's good. You can help me look over some handouts. They're going out later today. I came here early specifically so I could see you without having to do work. Going to Misha, being early isn't new for you. It's not new for you either. Are you saying you want to race? Shizune adjusts her glasses nonchalantly, a gesture that bellies how giddy she is inside about the thought of having something very petty to take competitively and seriously. I think the smaller the matter is, the more it excites her. <laughs> oh, guess what image I had in my mind on that. The smaller it is, the more it excites her. <laughs> oh, dirty minds. Oh no. It's not a race. Do you want to make it a contest? I don't. I almost forget to add the last part, the most important part. Well, that's fine. There are too many days left in the school year. I'd get tired of it anyway. With that, Shizune picks up her juice and finishes it off. I wonder if she's going to try and shoot the empty container into the trash. But she doesn't. In fact, she seems puzzled as to why I seem so disappointed. I'd better get to the point. I just want to talk. Our break is practically here, you know. And we should spend more time together anyway. I was thinking that we could do that over the summer. So today's face turns as red as mine must be, and she starts adjusting her glasses, flustered. What an all-purpose gesture. She taps her fingers together in thought, considering her next words carefully. You mean like a date? Just because we're going out somewhere that instantly makes it a date? It's not. I want it to be a date. Then it is one. Shizune approvingly claps her hands once before adding on to my statement. But not today. I'm going away for a week to visit my family. Ah yes, I haven't actually, you know, played for this route. I've said this a couple of times. If you <laughs> haven't noticed. But I remember seeing, like, an image showing Shizune standing next to a man who I assume must be her father, so... I've at least seen what her father looks like. I'm assuming it's her father. Then it turns out, no, actually, it's her older brother. It's like, well, plot twist for me. I thought it was her dad. I don't know. We'll get to that soonish, I imagine, in this route. That is an oddly formal way of putting it, and for that reason, my interest is piqued. Maybe her family is a prim and proper traditional kind, living in a giant old timey mansion with a little stream and koi, koi or pond or whatever, where everyone wears kimonos all the time. It's a wild assumption, but it's fun to speculate sometimes. I wonder if Shizune puts on the appearance of being a calm and mature good daughter like Lily when she is with her family. I can't imagine it, but if there's even a possibility that it's true, then I must see it. Only a week? It must not be that far of a trip then. Of course not, they're still in Japan after all. Really? It isn't like you can come uh it isn't like you can come with me. Is that what you're trying to say? Why can't I? It isn't like you would enjoy it. You don't know that uh you don't you don't know that. Could be fun. Ah, I almost forgot, you didn't answer my question. Are you going alone or is Misha going with you? Does your family no sign? Misha's coming alone. The part of the question is left unanswered is the most telling. If she's in its family can't communicate with her, I have to wonder what her childhood was like. She probably wrote everything on that patch she carries around and still produces out of nowhere sometimes. Hmm. This route is probably going to uh, be like uh, one of those where it's like a uh, bit of friction in the family where like there's a bit of an awkwardness to it. I don't know what to expect, though. 
is a is it gonna be like her family is a bunch of assholes or is there misunderstanding on both parts or what? I don't know. There's going to be drama though, I just know it. Just to be expected. Usually it's when neither Misha nor I are around. I can notice her from far away when she pulls it out like a last resort, grimacing the whole time. If Misha's going, then I'm going to go too. Do you like Misha? It's the principle of the vein. Entertain the notion that Shizune might actually be jealous, but I doubt it. She usually wears her emotions very plainly on her face. I don't see anything that would support my fear right now. I think you're just bored. That's okay though, alright, we'll all go together. It's what I hoped for in the first place. You can't skip out on student, uh, student council duty to... Uh, the council today to pack your bags. Just because you're coming with us on such short notice, it's no excuse. It's okay, I hardly have anything to pack anyway. Or was she just playing a game here? Because, well, she always does. I know. So any pauses, tending your fingers fortunately. Must have come to this school on very short notice. It could be that she is thinking back to the time when she and Misha unexpectedly shoved themselves into my room and caught a glimpse of my, all my medicines. That was an awkward moment I'd like to forget, so now I don't like revisiting it. Maybe that's the catch to this whole thing. It's like, if you've got to see my family, you've got to tell me what the condition is. The way she tiptoes around the issue even now only makes me more uncomfortable. I did. It was kind of an on-the-top decision. It worked out better than I expected, though. I hope she's only won't pursue the matter, and to my relief, she doesn't. My home is uh, in a particularly beautiful part of Saitama. Saitama. You can't pronounce, can you? We'll be leaving early in the morning, so be ready. Let's talk about it more later, okay? For now, these handouts won't look over themselves, and you're going to help me. As Shizune dives into the, her work, pulling me along with her, I think that she seems almost, but not quite, excited to go. Huh. Interesting. Well, Shizune and Misha arrive early in the next morning to wake me up. They are dressed in some and in an school uniform I've grown used to seeing them in. We're gonna have a cliffhanger here, but I wanna see what is it that they're wearing. What is their casual clothes? Casual clothes! It makes sense since we're on holiday, but it's still jarring. Jenny's dress is sharp and fashionable, almost too much for a quiet place like Yamaku. Back to what she wrote at the Tadabata Festival, I'm starting to notice a trend with her. All of her clothes are very tasteful and mature, very well thought out, so then I wonder why she herself is so immature. <laughs> what? What? Well, at least Misha's clothes reflect her inner self on the outside. You're bringing so little. I said I would. I said there wasn't much back. Today, Pouts and rocks her own rather large collection of luggage with her foot, as if embarrassed. Misha only has one suitcase with her, but it's almost larger than she is. She looks self conscious about it as well. God, that suitcase is as big as a compact car. The pea green color is unsettling too. It's like something used to transport bodies. The way it looks right now makes me want to tease them a little. Oh, that's a bad look for you and Misha, isn't it? Having to carry those huge bags. Gonna pack light next time, like me. Everything fits into one little suitcase. Like James Bond! Just exactly like James Bond. So today, gently tugs at her glasses in concentration. We should split the amount we carry equally. Wow, that's a great idea, she -chan. What? No. It would benefit as well. Yep! <laughs> I'm gonna have to say no. You're outvoted. <laughs> she almost lunges forth as she signs it. Terrifying. Except that cleavage. <laughs> Why is it with cleavage, man? Any time in a visual novel. Heck, even in Final Fantasy X, that's not a visual novel, but... Whenever Lulu's cleavage shows, I always point it out for some reason. It's like, cleavage! It's like, it all started with, my has cleavage, now everyone has cleavage. Well, not everyone, but you get the idea. Uh, well, I was uh, just kidding. I don't mind carrying a few extra, I just thought it would be fun to mess with you both. But if you were going to try and make me carry it all, I was going to ride that giant green case down the mountain like a sled. That seems to make Shizune laugh when she holds a hand up to her mouth to hold it back. It's like she's hiding it. 
I wonder if she can laugh. If not, that might be why she does that. That kind of makes me feel sad. We have that taken care of. We head for the train station and a very uneventful ride follows. She's in a major managed to fall asleep. From, oh, I failed that, didn't I? So it's exactly like those freaking Tannoy things or whatever the hell they call. It's like, next stop, blah, 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 blah. Fall almost, uh, fall asleep almost instantly, but I find myself unable to. That's never happened before. Maybe it's my medication. When we arrive at Chizuri's house, it's not, it's quite a bit larger than I envisioned it would be. I don't think huge would be much of an overstatement. But as curious as I am to see how this develops, I'm going to record it on recording there. So, I shall see you next time, viewers. See you next time.